In this experiment, you're going to measure the molar volume of oxygen using a gas apparatus. The molar volume of oxygen is 22.4 liters at standard temperature pressure, also known as STP. You're going to produce the oxygen gas by decomposing hydrogen peroxide, which is a reaction you may recall from experiment 3. You'll then use the gas apparatus to easily and accurately measure the volume of oxygen produced. Once you gather this data at room temperature and room pressure, you're then going to use the combined gas law to calculate the molar volume of oxygen at STP. The equation that summarizes the combined gas law is covered in chapter 10 of your textbook, so you want to review this prior to coming to lab. In addition, you want to take a look at your laboratory manual to give you some specific steps for calculating the molar volume. In the next couple of minutes, what we're going to do is give you a few pointers and demonstrations to help you complete this experiment more easily. We're going to show you the parts of a gas burette and how to use a gas burette, including a special segment on troubleshooting. In addition, we'll show you how to use a volumetric pipette that you'll use to measure out the volume of hydrogen peroxide. So take note of these demonstrations. They'll help you complete this experiment more effectively. Volumetric pipettes are used to deliver a single fixed volume of liquid. The pipette is filled with liquid to a designated graduation mark. Then the liquid is dispensed. We will use a 2 milliliter pipette to dispense the hydrogen peroxide. To use a pipette, you will also need a pipette bulb and solution. Here we will use colored water as our demonstration liquid. To use a pipette, first squeeze the bulb and place it firmly on the wider end of the pipette. Then place the tip of the pipette under the surface of the solution to be used. Withdraw some of the solution until it fills above the graduation mark. Then quickly remove the pipette bulb and cover the end of the pipette with your thumb or finger. Use your thumb or finger to control the liquid dispensing until it reaches the graduation mark. Then dispense the liquid. One tip for working with a pipette, a slightly moistened thumb or finger helps you to cover the end of the pipette and gives good flow control. Let's take a look at the parts of the gas apparatus. First we have a reaction chamber, which you can see better in this close-up. The reaction chamber consists of a test tube with a sidearm that is a connection point for tubing. It also has a black rubber stopper connecting it to a syringe. These make up the reaction chamber. Back on the apparatus, from the reaction chamber, a short piece of tubing leads to the gas burette. This is a 100 milliliter gas burette that measures the volume of gas produced. Notice that this burette is filled with a green liquid. This is simply water to which we've added green food coloring to help you visualize the water level. Note that the gas burette sits firmly on the ring stand base and that we've added some bubble wrap to help protect the burette. Always keep the burette on the bubble wrap. Coming from the bottom of the burette is a long piece of tubing leading to a leveling bulb. The role of the leveling bulb is to level out the pressure inside and outside the gas apparatus. Or said another way, the bulb helps equalize the gas pressure. To use the gas apparatus, you should add the peroxide to the sidearm test tube using the pipette as previously described. Use the syringe to withdraw about 0.5 milliliters of yeast solution and then firmly seat the syringe in the test tube. Next, we need to make sure there are no air leaks in the system. To check for air leaks, lower the leveling bulb at least 25 milliliters below the level in the gas burette. What you hope to see is that the level in the gas burette does not change, which means the two levels are different. This is success. You may see the levels in the burette and leveling bulb bounce or move just slightly as you move the bulb. This is normal. What you should see for an airtight system is that the levels do not equalize. Once you have determined the system is airtight, move the leveling bulb so that the liquid level equals that of the liquid level in the burette. We'll have more to say about how to fix systems with air leaks in a second. To begin the experiment, inject the yeast solution into the peroxide. You will see some bubbles form nearly immediately. This means the oxygen is being produced. You should see that the water level in the gas burette is decreasing. This is a good sign. A decreasing level indicates that oxygen gas is displacing water. Each time the water level decreases in the burette about 10 milliliters, you should lower the leveling bulb to equal out the pressure. Overall, the level will decrease about 20 to 30 milliliters in a few minutes.
Once a level in the gas burette has not changed for one minute, then the reaction is complete. Ensure that the water levels in the burette and bulb are the same. Then record the final water level. One problem you may experience is a leaking system. If there's an air leak, when you lower the bulb, the level of the burette will decrease too. And accordingly, when you raise the bulb, the level in the burette goes up. If this occurs, you need to fix the air leak before starting the experiment. There are two major types of leaks. The first is a tubing glass connection problem, either at the sidearm test tube or at the gas burette. These are fixed by tightening up the tubing at these connections. The second major place that you will get a leak is at the syringe stopper connection. Essentially, the connection between the syringe and stopper has a small air leak. To help you see this, we'll have a close-up of the syringe and stopper. To correct the syringe stopper air leak, you should use parafilm. Parafilm is like saran wrap for scientists. It is thicker than saran wrap and more pliable. Take a piece of parafilm and stretch it about the connection between the syringe and stopper. Make sure you stretch the parafilm around the stopper two or three times to create a good seal. Once you've added parafilm, put the stopper and syringe back onto the apparatus. Now raise or lower the bulb again to ensure the system is airtight. Success! If you still find an air leak, repeat the procedures until you find the problem spot. The main emphasis of safety for this experiment is to be careful with the syringe needles. The needles are sharp and often rusty. Be cautious as you use them. Specifically, be on guard as you take the syringe from the reaction chamber and when you replace it. One suggestion is to grasp the syringe firmly by the stopper as you pull it out. Additionally, if the syringe is placed on the lab bench, point the needle away from your body. This will protect you and your lab mates. We've never had a syringe puncture during this experiment. Let's keep it that way by using care as you work. In this final segment, we want to show you live, unrehearsed footage that can help you during lab. So next you'll see Anthony and his work and manipulation with the gas burette. Take note of his actions and see what you can learn from him. Anthony, didn't we tell you about keeping this burette down on the ring stand? Yeah, yeah. Let's make sure we keep it down there, okay? Anthony didn't think we were serious about keeping the burette on the ring stand. Don't end up like Anthony.